let's go over how to build the Unreal Engine source code faster and smarter. First, we need to download the Unreal Engine source code. To do that, we need permission to access the Unreal Engine GitHub repository. So for that, you need both a GitHub account and an Epic Games account. So sign up for both if you don't have them. Then sign into your Epic Games account, open your account dashboard, and link your GitHub account. After you've signed in and authorized Epic Games to access your GitHub account, you should have received an email from GitHub inviting you to join the Epic Games GitHub organization. Open that email, click Join Epic Games, and click Join Epic Games again. After becoming a member of the Epic Games GitHub org, you should now be able to view the Epic or the Unreal Engine GitHub repository. To download this repo, we are going to use Git. So if you don't have Git installed, then go to the official Git downloads page and download the Git installer. Then run the installer. The recommended default selection should suffice. Any changes you see me make are not necessary and are simply my preferences. Once you've installed Git, go to a location in File Explorer, preferably somewhere on an SSD rather than a hard disk drive where you want to place the engine repository and let's open up Windows Terminal here. Doesn't matter if you're using PowerShell, Command Prompt, or Git Bash to run these next few set of commands, all of which you can get from the description below. The first command is the quickest way to clone the Unreal Engine GitHub repository because it only gets one commit from one branch, specified by what you pass for this branch parameter. I chose the release branch because that contains the latest stable version of Unreal Engine at the time of filming, which is 5.6.1. If you need an older version, you can replace release with either the branch name or the tag name corresponding with that engine version. If you want the latest unstable version, you can replace release with either the branch name of the version that hasn't been released yet or UE5-main. Regardless, this download will still take a while depending on your internet speed, so please like the video and subscribe because a lot of you guys aren't subscribed and we could really use the support. Once the clone has finished though, change the working directory to the newly downloaded Unreal Engine repo. The next command that we are going to run is for installing dependencies for all the various build targets supported by Unreal Engine. You'll notice that I passed in several exclude parameters because I know I won't ever build an Unreal project for any of these platforms forms like Mac or iOS for example since I'm on Windows this will save up a little bit of space on your computer and there are even more platforms you can exclude check the pinned comment below for more information on that before we move on make sure that you have Visual Studio installed and set up for Unreal Engine if you don't we have a video on our channel covering this exact topic and once you have Visual Studio installed, go to the release notes, specifically the platform SDK upgrade section for your version of Unreal Engine. Look for the versions of the Toolchain, Windows SDK, and the .NET runtime or framework used. And make sure that you have in the individual components section of your Visual Studio installation, those same versions of the MSVC Toolchain, and the C++ Active Template Library build tools for both x64 as well as the Windows SDK and the .NET Runtime or Framework installed. Once that's done, the last command we need to run is generate project files .bat. This will create the Visual Studio solution file for the engine code where we will do the actual building. If you see a message in the output from this command saying anything related to the wrong or unpreferred MSVC toolchain or window SDK version being used, go to the engine directories engine, config folder, and open up the base engine INI file. Scroll down to this section labeled script slash windows target platform dot windows target settings. Add these three lines which are in the description to the bottom of this section. Make sure that the version numbers correspond with not only what the release notes recommended but also what you actually installed 
and save your changes. Run the generate project files .back command again if needed and you should now see this Visual Studio solution file at the root of your engine directory. Go ahead and open it up. Under the Solution Explorer, you may see two warnings. The first one is about installing recommended Visual Studio components. If you accidentally close this and need to get it back, then you'll have to close Visual Studio, delete the .vs folder and the .vs config file in your engine directory and rerun the generate project files .back command. If you do see this warning, then click install. And don't worry if you didn't see exactly what was on my screen. Some of that stuff was related to cross compilation in Unreal from Windows to Linux. If you're interested in that, we do have a video covering that topic. The other warning is related to NuGet packages. You can either click where it says Manage NuGet Packages here, or right click the solution and select Manage NuGet Packages, and then check the box labeled Show Only Vulnerabilities. For every package you see here, select it and on the right, check the boxes by the projects where this package is installed. Don't check off all the projects in this list. For this package, there are only a few packages that utilize it. Once you have those projects selected, click on the version drop down menu and select a non vulnerable version. Then click install and apply. After those warnings have been addressed, you can technically now build the engine by right clicking where it says UE5 under the engine folder and selecting build. But before that, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to maximize the speed at which it takes to build the engine because it takes a long time. The first pieces of advice are related to hardware, starting with storage. I highly recommend that the drive where your engine is located is a NVMe SSD with at least 300 gigabytes of free space. Next, with RAM, check the speed of your memory using Task Manager or any third-party software like CPU-Z. It's free, and you'll see that my DRAM frequency is about 3000 megahertz. This was what was rated for my specific model of RAM. If you find that this value for you is much lower than what was advertised for your model of RAM, then make sure that in the BIOS that the XMP or Expo profile setting is enabled. Besides enabling XMP or Expo mode for your memory, I recommend Googling or searching for YouTube videos or chat GPT for advanced settings that you can tinker for your specific motherboard model and CPU to help improve RAM speeds. Now for the CPU, use any third party software to check on the temperature of your CPU. If you have a Ryzen CPU like me, you can download AMD Ryzen Master. If you have a non Ryzen CPU, you can download HW Info. Both are free. If your CPU is overheating, meaning it's going above the thermal limit while building the engine, it will throttle and thereby slow down the build. You can prevent this by limiting the max power draw of your CPU in your BIOS settings, aka underclocking your CPU. Every CPU and motherboard are different, so you'll have to look into how to do this for your CPU and motherboard. And while we're talking about the CPU, if you have a CPU with logical cores, meaning the CPU can do hyper-threading, make sure in your BIOS that the SMT setting is enabled. Moving on from hardware in the power, sleep, and battery settings, make sure that the power mode is set to best performance. And in the timeouts, make it so that your device never sleeps or turns the screen off. Then in the virus and threat protection settings, exclude the Unreal Engine source code repository as well as the directory where all your Unreal projects will be located from Microsoft's Defender antivirus scans. Next, create a C++ project in the Epic Games launcher version of Unreal Engine and make sure that the launcher version is the same version as the version of the source build you plan on using. If you don't have the launcher version of the engine, we have a video covering how to install it. But once you have that new project or an existing C++ project, close out the Unreal Editor or any Visual Studio windows if they are open and go to the projects location in File Explorer, right click the U project file and select switch Unreal Engine version and select 
the source build and reopen the project in Visual Studio. This will make the biggest difference in improving compilation time because instead of building the entire engine, we are only going to build the engine modules relevant to the project. The final tip for speeding up the C++ compilation of the engine involves editing the build configuration.xml file. You can either edit the engine build configuration located in the engine save Unreal build tool folder, which applies to all projects built with this version of the engine or the projects build configuration, which is located in the saved Unreal build tool folder, which takes precedence and overrides what's set in the engine build configuration. Let's edit the engine configuration. Copy and paste the XML from this gist, which will be linked in the description below. I'm not going to go over all of this, but I have comments throughout this file explaining what each line does. If you want to get even more advanced, you can actually look through all the possible settings in this file on the Epic Games documentation. The sections relevant to building Unreal include build configuration, Windows platform, and parallel executor. Now let's finally build Unreal Engine Source in our project's Visual Studio solution. Make sure that you have the development editor configuration selected. Note that it is faster to build a debug or debug game version of the editor, but I don't recommend it because they are less performant than a development editor. Make sure Win64 is the selected platform. Lastly, try to avoid running any other program during the build. Right click your project and select build. This is the longest part of the process, so feel free to pause the video, like the video, subscribe, and come back when this is done. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please consider joining our Patreon or becoming a YouTube member where you'll get early access to our future videos. The next one is going to be about building Unreal Engine source even faster by distributing the C++ compilation tasks to local and remote machines using Unreal's new Horde system. If there were any build errors, then just build the project again to fix those. But do not rebuild, just build. But if the build succeeded, check your Unreal Engine directories, engine, binaries, Win64 folder, and look for the Unreal Editor executable. Go ahead and launch that. And from here, let's run our game. Now, if you've experienced issues before with the speed of compiling shaders, you should modify that base engine.ini file from earlier, but this time under the dev options.shader section, either lower the num unused shader compiling threads and num unused shader compiling threads during game values. If your physical CPU core count is lower than the shader compiler core count threshold value or if your physical cpu core count is higher then lower the percentage unused shader compiling threads value instead and lastly you can try experimenting with this worker process priority value by raising it to zero one or even two but this will only matter if you're running other cpu intensive processes at the same time as running unreal engine if you ended up making any changes here then you'll have to quit unreal engine and relaunch to notice the effects if any. But once the editor has launched, congrats, you have successfully built Unreal from source. Now, for whatever reason you want to build the rest of Unreal Engine that's not used by your project, you can always open the UE5 Visual Studio Solution file again, or from the project, build where it says UE5 under Engine. Do not do a rebuild. Even if you don't ever do a rebuild manually, from time to time they will happen when you do a regular build. There's not much you can do about that, unfortunately. With that said, if you want to avoid rebuilding the engine altogether, you can make what's called an installed build and never have to worry about building the engine again after the first time. We will be making a video covering this in the very near future, so if you want early access to that video, then please become a member of our channel or join our Patreon. But if anything from this video made a difference for you and how long it took to build Unreal Engine from source, then please comment down below, like the video, and subscribe. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.